Good morning, church. Let's greet our streamers today. Welcome. Welcome home. It's so wonderful to be here in the house of the Lord. We're all cozy and snuggled in. It's pouring rain. It's raining cats and dogs outside. But we're safe in our little ark. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Well, we're in a new series uh, called The Servant's Dance. And it's a beautiful image. I want you to picture sort of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers as they would effortless, seemingly it was effortless what they were doing. They would dance up the stairs and down the stairs and out on the veranda and back in. And they would rehearse those dances in exhaustively for weeks in order to do one take. And... You know, the better you are at something, the easier you make that thing look to others. Did you know that? The better you are. David is such an excellent drummer that he just makes it look like we could all pick up sticks and do that. Try it. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about bond slavery. And I'm going to be able to help identify exactly who you are and where you fit. There's something amazing about God. He tells us the truth about us. One thing about the Bible, he tells us the truth. And the truth is we are all slaves by nature. The Greek word is doulos. And it means a willing bond slave. And it's the unique Greek word for slavery that points to the fact that you were born into a house and were a slave by nature. Remember Bob Dylan's excellent song, You Got to Serve Somebody, right? You don't have a choice. You are by nature a slave. You're going to serve the devil and his uh, retinue in his thoughts and plans, or you're going to serve Jesus Christ. Those are the only options that you have. And the Bible says through our first birth in fallen Adam, we were born into the house of slavery in association with Satan as our master. You say, well, Craig, I, I'm not that bad. Oh, honey, you're worse. The Bible's clear about it. We are born as St. Augustine said, with the necessity to die and the propensity to sin. So we're born on, on, on a toboggan already sliding down the hill into hell. That's the Bible <laughs> introduces us, those cute little angels that come forth. Yeah, I never had to teach my kids to lie. I never had to teach them to cheat and to steal. It just came so naturally to their sweet little fallen natures. So the Bible tells us that we are slaves by nature. And the issue is, which master are we going to be serving? And until we break the, unit, the union that we have with our fallen nature and doing service to the Lord of darkness— through accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior, our bond slavery will not change. So a, a doulos was a slave born into that condition. There is nothing you can do about it. You are a, you're going to serve something, someone, a person, place, a thing, but you are a slave by nature. See, that word is such a poisoned word that our spirits recoil whenever we hear it. Jesus put it this way in Mark 9, 35. Anyone who wants to be first must be last and the servant of all. Remember last week we looked at foot washing? Remember we saw the very God-man, the Lord of heaven and earth, the Redeemer of all human flesh, and it says he lowered himself. Philippians 2 says he came a little baby thing that made a woman cry, but he was born into a doulos slavery. He took the role of a slave, and he, by stripping himself naked, 
taking a towel and washing the feet of the disciples, he was lowering himself. The word is humilitas. It's a beautiful word. It speaks of the mindset of one utterly dedicated to the least in our midst. And by washing feet, which was the job done by the lowest servant of the house, that was considered the most undignified job. Yet isn't the kingdom an upside-down kingdom? We think power is Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar and Napoleon and let's be the Gentiles. That's how Gentiles rule. Domination, manipulation, control. Do it or I'll kill you and your family. But Jesus said, but you, my children, will not be like this. Heaven's understanding of power is so interesting. Power is always united to the one who's serving the lowest in our midst. We don't consider power in our culture as being anything other than a dominating thing, but it never is in the Bible. So when we begin to act like we're Alexander the Great, or we begin to control, or we begin to manipulate, and we begin to demand our own will, and we begin to do all these arrogant and cocky things which are expressions of the flesh, Jesus says, oh, you're not my bondservant. You're not acting in, in accord to your actual identity as a bondservant. You're a do-loss. We're do-loy, plural. I've got my little douloi here. Amen. Do you know in Luke 138, Mary called herself a bond slave. The Lord's precious mother saw herself as the least in midst. This isn't a negative self-image. This is a very sober understanding of your identity in Christ. Paul was an apostle. Yes, he was a prophet. Yes, he was an excellent teacher. Yes, but his primary identification of himself in Romans 1.1, 1, 1, I am a bond slave. I am a dedicated doulos. That's who I am. That was Paul's chosen identity for himself. James 1.1, 1, 1, James the doulos of the Lord. 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Peter, a doulos, a bond servant. Well, we're going to look at some of the traits and go a little deeper into some of what we brought up last week. But Galatians 6, 17, uh, as a doulos, as a bondservant, you bore the mark of your master. You see, you were only dedicated to fulfilling one will and one desire, and that was the will and the desire of your master. There was a freedom being a bond slave. As a bond slave, you never had to listen to anyone else's opinion. You didn't even have to pay the time of day to somebody saying, hey, slave, would you this, that, and the other? If that's not your master talking, you walk right past them. They have no right to command you, to order you. Only your master's voice, only one voice that you have to listen to. Well, they don't like me, and th they think this, and it doesn't matter what they think ever. All that masters, bond slave, is what your master is saying to you. Only the voice of Jesus. That's you play to the applause of Christ, period. Isn't that liberating? You mean all these people that think they know the kind of Christian God wants me to be, and they're giving me their opinions, unsolicited advice is always a curse, always always will be, always was. We only need the voice of our master. What's he saying? What's he saying? You're free of all opinions. Thank God. I wish I knew that 50 years ago. I wish I knew everything 50 years ago. I wish I didn't know some of you 50 years ago. Amen. We will bear the brand and the mark forever 
of our master that sets us apart into his service. Abraham was called the servant of the Lord, the slave of the Lord, Genesis 26, 24. Joshua is called the slave of the Lord, Joshua 24, 29. David, our beloved king, was called the slave of the Lord, 2 Samuel 7, 5. Isaiah was called the slave or bond slave of the Lord, Isaiah 20, verse 3. Isn't it interesting? Messiah himself, Isaiah 53, 11, is called the bond slave of the Father. So we're in good company. Mm -hmm. We don't follow a cause. We follow a person. Think about that. Every idiot following a cause in our time is a blustering, loud numbskull. Causes can be a little bit right or mostly right, but when you follow a cause, you have no allegiance to anyone other than yourself in your following of a cause. We follow not an it, but a who. And his, he's our writer, he's our producer, he's our director, he is the, he's the golf clap we're playing for. That's it. At the end of your life, he will look at you and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I only want his attaboy. I don't care what any other master tries to say to me and about me. Bless your heart. Opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got them. Most of them stink. So I only follow as I can discern his voice. That sets you free from feeling harassed by someone else's opinion or accosted by someone else's opinion. Their opinion doesn't matter. Only his. Humilitas is a state of mind free from arrogance, offense, and pride. Wouldn't it be good to be free of being offended every 20 seconds? Do you like hanging out with people that are offended easily? Oh, oh. Oh, Lord, it's exhausting. You know, I'm walking on eggshells 24 hours a day. <laughs> Look at them the wrong way. Right? Beloved, there is, a, there is such a beauty that descends upon a bond slave, a doulos. A man, woman, boy, or girl that realizes, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was born into a slavery context where Satan was my master. I've broken that yoke. And I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord, and he has caused me to be born into a whole new family and a whole new standing. And now I, the, the, the word doulos means to bind. You are hooked up to, married to, bound forever to a master. And you live only for your will to be consumed in his will. Your only existence is to fulfill his will in all things. You don't need to worry about anything because the master paid for the due loss, his water, his food, his clothes, his sleeping quarters. There was no responsibility on the due loss's plate except obeying the one singular will and desire of the master. Now, we are constantly as confused as a term might in a yo-yo. We're distracted all the time. We're here, there, everywhere. And instead of even loving him, we're listening to his word, and we're listening to worship, and we're reading books and devotionals, and I mean, oh my God. It's like after a while, God just goes, oh, please stop doing all these religious things. I'm doing it for you, Jesus. No, you're not, you addict. Snort coke for a while. Leave the religious stuff alone, said the pastor. Gretchen was going to step in at that point and correct her master. <laughs> Do you see how we binge on even Christian things? Ever been to a Christian bookstore lately and seen all the Jesus junk? When you're checking out, take a look at the testaments and the chocolate Jesus that bleeds raspberry cream. Oh, my money changers in the temple. 
you know, you're seeing all this stuff and you're going, wait, wait a minute, we're testaments? Please, don't say you did that. And put a business plan together and say, this is going to change the world. What do you all need in the morning? A breath mint, right? Yeah. Well, we're going to corner that market. A Holy Ghost fat cat is making this presentation to a bunch of gullible millionaires. Yeah, that's it. I'll invest in mints. Beloved, we get crazy in the name of God, and we do so many crazy things. All the busy work we do, all the Martha cooking meals in the kitchen, <laughs> anxious, freaked out, chain smoking. <laughs> Jesus, why don't you send Marion to help me? Well, put the cigarette down and the scotch down and quit making pancakes. I didn't order anything, Martha, that you're doing. Bless your heart. And as Jesus put it, thou art troubled of many things, Martha. Martha's never are just frantic about one thing. It's 10 that they're balancing on the sticks, and they wonder why they're exhausted all the time and why everybody around them is exhausted all the time. We need to have a Martha pistol that we can use on Marthas who won't repent. <laughs> Jimmy Bag of Donuts. Gretchen, I have my mob gospel. You have your gospel. We all preach our gospels. But do you see it? Jesus is looking at Martha going, honey, I know you think you're doing all this for me, but you're hair-lipping my kingdom. You're screwing up the atmosphere. We can't even, Mary and I can't even worship out here because you're banging pots. You know, one, you know it's like my mom when she'd get upset. You know, Mom, what's the matter? Nothing. Oh, Mom, what's the matter? Don't touch me. Nothing's the matter, huh, Mom? What a pain to be around. Beloved, don't be a pain to be around. Really. I'm, I'm just trying to be nice. A do loss is born into their condition. It's permanent. You are a bondservant forever in faithful obedience to one voice, that of your master. And he takes care of all your needs. You don't even have to think about them because that's his job. And when you think of Paul, as brilliant as he was, the apostle, as highly seasoned in worldly affairs as he was, but he identifies himself as the least in the midst of God's holy church. He calls him the apostle born out of due time. He said, I'm the least among all of these apostles. I'm like a weird little special needs apostle, Paul says. But he knew who he was. And it's interesting. I mentioned it last week. I'll bring it out now. God's power is only consistently expressed through humilitas, as seen in the doulos, the bonsai. Well, no, last time I saw someone put fire out of their hands, they had 100,000 people in a stadium. That, that's possible. But I believe we're standing on the brink of the greatest outpouring of God in human history, and I believe we're going to see things we've never seen before, but they're only going to be seen in a context of his faithful bond servants who are humble enough to serve the least in our midst, wherever our midst is. It's not too much to ask them to, as Jesus did, remove their garments, put on a towel, and wash the feet of Judas. The nasty corns of Judas is carried. Power is married in all cases to bond slavery. See, we don't associate power. We think like the Gentiles. We think of Alexander the Great. We think of Julius Caesar. We think of all of those conquest images and Hannibal. And oh my, and, that, and that's exciting. And those people are very interesting. I've studied most of them all my life. But as I look to Scripture, 
I see the kind of power I'm thirsting for is always revealed only in a bond slavery context. Because that's where you see people who truly have humbled themselves under the mighty hand of God, and therefore he can exalt. Mm-hmm. Being a bond slave doesn't mean that you're a doormat that everybody walks on. It doesn't mean you have low self-esteem. No, 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 no. When you know who you are, that produces a confidence and a boldness and a settled sense of rest in you. You don't have to be sensational. You don't have to be spectacular. In fact, you may not be talented at all. You may be just be a, a, a mild molly. You just may be a little Jimmy, you know, and you're just, you don't have many gifts or talents or opportunities. You don't have a lot of money. That's okay. Because you can always outserve everyone in your house. You can always outserve anyone in your church. And if you do, you just do it because it's right. And all of a sudden you begin to see a power married to you, a favor that begins to come upon you, and it can rest as an easy yoke on your shoulders because you're being a doulos, you're being the bond slave he wants you to be. And then you've entered the servant's dance. Now you're Fred Astaire and Ginger, right? You're not clod hopping around, offending everybody, wearing a, you know, a, a porcupine outfit. I mean, being around some people is like they're wearing porcupine outfits. And you just wonder why you're bleeding all the time. Well, you might need a little oil <laughs> to come into your precious life to smooth down those quills. Because the goal is that God wants you to be the greatest servant to the least in your midst. That's our goal. Now let's look at our short-term goals and our long-term goals and exactly what is it to be a doulos, one of the douloi, a bond slave, playing only to the applause of your master. That's it. His direction, his word, his calling. There's a lot of voices out there. It's so noisy in our time. Good Lord, even, even like I say, there's noise in the church. You can have noisy worship on all the time. Noisy Bible teachers on in the background all the time. Maybe it's time sometimes to get quiet enough, still enough, to step aside from all the crazy chaos and just hear one voice. And beloved, you don't even have to look like you're having a bowel movement to hear God. I'm fasting for six days to hear from God. No, you've missed it. You've missed it. You're, you're doing something again for Jesus. You're not a human doing. You're a human being. He's the master. You're the slave. Just do whatever he says. Calm down. It's time to move from complexity to simplicity. I'm a servant. I'm bound forever to Jesus. Craig only has to hear one voice. That's his only focus, his only interest. And that's the only voice I obey. And I just do the next right thing as each day presents itself. Isn't that simple? Just do the next right thing. He'll give you just enough light to see the next right step to take. Isn't that simple? Even you can do that and not screw it up. I wish I knew Greek and Hebrew. Honey, the only Hebrew you know may own a deli. But that's okay because... Peter and John were not formally educated, yet when they spoke, the leaders of Israel perceived that they had been with Jesus because they had that same ointment on them. They were bond servants. They had the same wisdom and beauty and winsomeness that was flowing out of Jesus. They perceived they'd been with Jesus. I hope when someone spends time with you, they perceive you've been with Jesus. Amen. Think about it. A doulos was devoted to the interest of his master to the extent that he disregards his own interests. Mm. We serve Jesus to the utter disregard of our own 
interests. We're doulai. We're, we're bound to him through marriage forever. Oh, my Lord. But see, this idea of slavery is, is repellent to us because we don't understand it in its context. We don't understand the beauty of being a bondservant. This was the most understood concept in the time of Jesus. Everybody knew what a bond slave was. Exodus chapter 21, verse 2 said, If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. And if he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master had given him a wife, and she has borne him sons and daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. Look at verse 5. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, my children, I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, or unto the door post. And his master shall bore his ear through with an owl, and he shall serve him forever. A willing choice to be bonded in bond slavery to your beloved master. It's your freedom. It's your choice but they would take you out and you would publicly confess your allegiance to this one master. You would demonstrate it's your free choice. No one else can make you do this. It's your free choice to choose to serve him forever. And then they would take your ear to the door and they would bore it and you get an earring that you wear the rest of your life, a visible symbol that you belong to this house this is your master. No one else. You listen to only one voice, no others, your whole life. And it's a forever one-way decision. It's what we call fixed freedom. It's fair, it's free, it's fixed, it's final, it's one way. There's no way to take it back. And isn't that a beautiful thing if it's joining a home you love and the people you love to be around? Boy, that earring was significant. Or you bore the brand mark of that master. It was not a mark. We're not talking about antebellum slavery in the Civil War. We're not talking about people owning people like that. Did you know most of the slavery in the Bible is what we call indention, indentured slavery? Remember when the founding fathers or mothers came over to our country and they couldn't afford the, the price of the trip? They would indenture themselves into servanthood in order to pay for that trip. So you would say, all right, pay for my ticket to come over to the new country and I'll work for you. I'll be your bond slave uh, for six years. Right? That's indentured servitude. That's not the biblical slavery described in those terms is not antebellum slavery that we see our culture still buzzing about. Indentured slavery is freely chosen commitment. It's like a credit card transaction that you have with somebody. These people weren't held in chains against their will and beaten up. In fact, if you beat a servant, who was indentured to your cause, you would be killed. The master could not hit a slave in the biblical sense. You had obligations. If you killed one of your slaves, you die. Capital punishment. So we've got to get a little bit clear here on blending antebellum civil war black and white slavery, how it's portrayed in our time, versus indentured servitude. Two, two, two different things. And by the way, the Bible never condones people owning other people in a malicious sense. Never. It faithfully records the fact of our broken, fallen human condition and all the nasty things we do to each other. But never, that, the Bible describes that, but it never prescribes that. 
In fact, a Hebrew could not even engage in the service of another unless there were clear guidelines. You could only be engaged in service for six years. At the end of, on the seventh year, you were set free. Or if on the year of Jubilee that came after so many Sabbaths, the 50th year, then all your debts were paid off, all your indentured servitude commitments were wiped clean, and you could start all over again. So a Hebrew w was never allowed to be sold out into the kind of antebellum slavery that we see. A people bought and sold and whipped and beaten and killed. And that's horrifying. Never spoken of as some wonderful institution by the Bible. That's an absolute lie. But do you see what we're losing in the midst of our fragmented understanding is the beauty that rises up in the doulos. A doulos is the most sacred position you can have in relationship to Jesus Christ because he became a doulos for you. Philippians 2, he that was God Almighty in the flesh strikes a tent in human flesh, humbles himself to become a man, and even to the death of the cross. Let this mind be in you that was also in him. What mind? The mind of a doulos, the mind of a bond servant. He was utterly committed to the will of the Father, and only, he said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only do what I see the Father doing, and I'm only ever going to obey his will for my life. He is our example. And he had the greatest power. Can you imagine what it would have been like sitting with Jesus? Just the emanation, the beauty of holiness, the love of God in human flesh. That must have been a wonderful thing. No wonder all the normal Joes on the street craved to be around him and near him and hear his jokes and hear how he's mocking the religious leaders all the time, impersonating big fat Pharisees with their phylacteries and praying out loud to be seen of men. And they're just, the kids are howling. The common people heard him gladly. And the religious folk hated his guts. And guess what? Little doulos, they'll hate your guts too. Good news. To be loved by the right people and hated by the right people, that's what we got to get straightened out. Mm -hmm. The religious people hated Jesus. Common people loved Jesus. I want to associate with the common people. Thank you. Keep the rest. I don't have room for them. I don't want them coming in here. I don't want them being astute and taking notes at my marvelous lectures. No, 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 no. Please, go to Calvary. You have a line for you to stand in. I just want humble douloi in my space. These are not people that are grudge, you know, I'm a slave and I'm like, God, I can't believe it. I'm so bitter. No, 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 no. Not as one of his servants. It is our privilege to be used as his hands and feet. It's our privilege to obey his voice. It is a delicious, light, and easy yoke to only obey his direction. You know, we always think, I'm trying to hear from God, but I know if I hear from God, he's going to tell me to do some stupid thing. He's going to tell me to marry a 600-pound woman that never bathes. And then I'll have to disobey him then, and then I'll have to go to hell, and then I'll have to, I don't know if you think like I did when I was young. That, that's the crazies that would come into my head. And I was, I, my God picture was a little bit flaky when I first started out in this journey. You know, that's what I thought. I heard so many preachers when I was a teenager that, by the way, don't, don't, don't subject yourself to the teaching of 35 different people because they're as confused as termites and yo-yos. They're all contradicting each other. Every teaching you hear will be contradicted by the next two preachers that follow on the radio broadcast. So use wisdom. Take heed what you hear. Jesus said. Well, it's Christian. Don't listen to all the worship in the world. Don't listen to all the sermons in the world. Don't follow every minister in the world. Use wisdom, beloved. 
because I heard some cockamamie uh, blend of sermons that, uh, and, and I heard one stupid sermon that all but ruined my world. And it was some fool that said, if you ever fully yield yourself completely to God, he's going to make you be a missionary in Mozambique, Africa, and marry a 600-pound woman, and you better obey. I heard that piece of straw come out of a so-called sermon, and that lodged in my spirit. And I started being afraid of yielding myself completely to God, because if I ever yield myself completely to God, I know I'm going to have to go to Mozambique, Africa with a 600-pound unwashed woman. Because it's just something God would tell you to do. And if you disobey, it would be your flesh. Well, I, I, I love her heart. I hope so. Have you ever had crazy ideas that if you really obey Jesus, it's going to be some cockamamie, horrifying thing? Beloved, beloved, that's false. Don't listen to those chaotic voices. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all the churches. So go through and scap out and get rid of all the hay, not the hay, the sticks. Get rid of the sticks. Eat the fish, spit out the bones, whatever cockamamie ideas you have that you think the voice of the Lord is telling you to do, we need to clean that out this week. Amen. And just know, he's my friend, he's not my enemy. God is not a weirdo. His people are, he is not. So I need to get out of my head that my God picture is that of a creepy God who's, who's going to just tell me stuff I hate to do and make me do everything contrary to my giftings, contrary to my anointing, contrary to my education, and if I don't do it, then he's just going to put me in hell. Well, if I preach that God, we'd get bigger offerings, I promise you. It's true. <laughs> why don't you, why are you guys asking for money? Because we don't manipulate, and we don't control, and we don't threaten you with crazy God pictures, and I know exactly what I'd have to do to get you given. But I'd have to teach false doctrine to get you to give that way. And you know what? I don't want anything from anyone that comes from an improper motive. We don't need dirty money in this church. There's plenty of folks we're feeding that can feed us with clean offerings that are pleasing to the Lord and to us. Amen. <laughs> See, Jesus said, you're released from so much stress when you become a doulos, when you realize that's my primary identity. Then it becomes a servant's dance. Then it's Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. If you don't know who they are, look them up and watch them do one dance routine flawlessly. And there's such a beauty to the symmetry of the servant's dance. It's fun. It's delicious. It's wonderful. Or the servant's uh, tango, as Mike keeps trying to lobby me to say. Yes. <laughs> the servant that he is, he's resting in God's house. Oh, beloved, I want to speak peace over you. Just, it's time for all the complexity to fall away and simplicity to surface again, you know? It's time for it, him to hit the button on the odometer and put everything down to zero, zero, zero again. Wipe off the slate, clean the board, rake the Zen garden, smooth everything out. And you can say, I am the beloved of the Lord who happens to be a doulos. I was born again into my new relationship with my master Jesus, and I only obey his voice and serve his cause. And I don't even have to worry about my desires and my will and my opinions because I'm wholly swallowed up in doing his will, fulfilling his desires, and doing whatever he says, whenever he says it. And you know what? He'll empower me to do that much to do the next right thing? Can you do the next right thing? I know you can. You can't do everything, but you can do one thing. Calm down. You know, it's funny how frantic our life gets and how noisy our soul is. I 
I don't know about you, but I need simple guidance. I need to hear his voice with a hearing ear, and then I need to have the anointing to have the learned tongue that can speak that word. That's what I do. That's my calling. That's what I'm doing right now. And you probably needed to hear this because you're a little doulos. Doulos, doulos, do remember me. Maybe you can remember it that way. You are the apple of his eye. But isn't that beautiful? Once you are free of the burden of having to perform and be Steve Steining and Rufus Glitter Teeth and, and fulfilling everybody else's expectation, becoming the Christian, they are certain they know God wants you to be. Then we're free. Free of all other opinions, shaped only by his. Father, I thank you. I lift my precious brethren to you right now, God. Push the odometer again down to zero, 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 Lord. Wipe the board clean, completely clean. Give us a fresh page to write on, Lord, a Zen garden, raked, ready to be imprinted. Wet cement before us, Lord, untouched. We pray for simplicity in the name of Jesus. And we pray that we can look in the mirror and realize I am a doulos of the Lord. I'm born into this forever union with him and I live only to fulfill his will. And I have to obey only his voice with regard to my life and my existence, Lord. Wash us clean of all of the complexity of our hearts and lives and minds and all the chatter all the confusion. And Lord, help us be quiet enough to hear the still small voice of our master. In Jesus' name, amen. You little slave, you. It's true. That is a sacred word when understood as a doulos. It embraces everything you need to know about you. Paul was brilliant, yes. He was an intellectual, yes. He was an apostle, yes. But he identified himself as a doulos. That was his fundamental identity. Let it become yours. Amen. Well, you precious things, I sure do love sitting in this chair and ministering. You know, this place is like little Philadelphia Love Church. God allows people to come in. God counts by ones here, and he brings people, and he gives, lets them look through the little keyhole and observe whatever it is that man is saying again. And you find it's exactly what you needed to hear, exactly when you needed to hear it. Isn't that spooky in a good way? It is. So you're welcome anytime. Go to our website. There are tons and tons and tons of free messages. You can, you can start scrolling messages and keep them going for the next three years and you won't run out. If you want to binge, we have some folk that turn these messages on because they say my voice comforts them and they go to sleep. I have the same effect at church, too. (laughs) Who needs Zolpidem when you've got Pastor Greg? Good old Pastor Greg. Well, we love you. And if we feed you, would you take a moment and feed us? I've got to pay the rent this week for the church. And I've got to meet a number of obligations, and we certainly would love to be able to count on your monthly support. If you don't tithe anywhere, maybe you don't give anywhere, maybe you've been wondering what to do, well, we will gladly receive any tithe or offering that you may have laying around. Just simply go to our website, push a button. It's very easy to give here. and Go ahead and make that commitment if you would. Uh, I'd like to be bold enough to ask if you would this week, because I need it. We need it this week. 
now now's the time when I pay all the bills of the month. And you know the, the bills are the same yesterday, today, and forever. They're faithful. So we would like to invite you, those of you, you may be new to us. Maybe you've been peeking in a little bit over the last few weeks or months. If, if we're feeding you, please take that moment and sign up for a monthly gift. We'd appreciate it. Amen. David, come and bless us. Let's greet David as he comes. David Logeman. Hello, my brother. Bless you. That's mine. Stewart. Oh, God bless you all in the name of Jesus, our master. Well, as you prepare your elements for us to, to have here at the table of the Lord, I want to encourage those of you that are still waiting for your healing. I was uh, in the book of Daniel, and I was just kind of researching some prophecy, and uh, I was reminded of this, and uh, boy, it blessed me again. It's blessed me a few times. I just wanted to share it with you. Um, when God sent the angel to Daniel, the angel said, you're greatly loved by God. And sometimes when your healing is delayed, the enemy will tell you it's because God doesn't care. Oh, yes, he does. He loves you very much. Listen to what the angel says to Daniel in chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Fear not. From the first day that you set your mind to understand, your words were heard. I have come as a consequence of your words. But the prince of Persia withstood me. Just realize God doesn't want you to be fearful about any injury, any kind of illness or sickness that you may be dealing with. When you first set your mind to believe that Jesus allowed his body to be broken for yours to be healed, it's all set in motion. And yes, the enemy, just like the enemy delayed the angel from coming, he couldn't stop the angel from coming. So be encouraged today. Maybe it's been a while. Maybe you're wondering, does God hear me? Yes, he does. Does God love me? Yes, he does. He loves you. This is the proof. This is the proof. So take this physical symbol of God's love, Jesus' sacrifice for your health and wholeness, and let's break it and let's confess. He is our Savior. Go ahead and partake. The enemy tried to delay and stop our Lord going to the cross, but he couldn't do it, couldn't stop him. Maybe the enemy tried to stop you from believing that Jesus is your Savior, but he didn't stop you. Don't worry. Everything is taken care of right here in his shed blood. You are forever his, like Pastor said. You are his servant, and you're forever his. Rest assured that all your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus by his blood. Be encouraged. Don't let the waiting put doubt, confusion, or false things in your mind. God loves you. He's redeemed you. Be blessed this week in Jesus' name. We hope today's message has been a blessing to you. And if it has, please visit our website at drcraigjohnson.org. There you can find additional messages of encouragement. And if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider us in your ministry giving, as we depend solely on the financial assistance of our listeners like yourself. Also, please feel free to send any personal prayer requests. You can find us online at drcraigjohnson.org. God bless you.